Sorry. Hello, everyone. My name is Stephen F. Mayo, the acting super. This program, Mrs. Margaret McGrath, who also is sharing with you during, during this transition period the position of acting superintendent of schools. Uh, as you know, Educational Moments is a program that we run from time to time uh, designed to focus on some timely topics. And certainly, the transition into a new superintendent of schools, new leadership for the system is a timely topic. So, welcome to Educational Moments. Moments. Thank this you, Dr. Mayo. Thank you. And uh, as pleasure. we were talking before the program, I'd like really to reminisce with you for a while, to talk about uh, the year that you came to Wakefield and, and what was your background then, and, and then you move into the Atwell School. So when was it that you uh, moved to Wakefield? Well, it seems like yesterday, Dr. Mayo, but it was in uh, August, late August of 1985. Mm -hmm. And at that particular time, I was hired as a district principal to cover the Atwell School and the Heard School. Uh, that particular district. I came from a background of being an elementary principal prior to that in Avon, and then prior to that, a system-wide elementary assistant principal in Mansfield. So basically my background in elementary education as well as uh, administration in that area. I remember, it does seem like yesterday, and I do remember <laughs> driving you around town showing you where the Heard School was right. at the time. Right. When you came in. And what were the special conditions uh, at the Atwell School at the time? Or, uh, even the special conditions to your coming on, I remember a few of them quite vividly. Well, I, I recollect um, vividly um, the school was a centralized grade 6 school, uh, whereby the youngsters did leave the neighborhood schools after grade 5 and came into the Atwell School for their one year of grade 6 before going on to the junior high school. So that was an entirely new population starting in September of 1985. Coupled with that, we also had an elementary school in there grades uh, 1 to 5, a single-track elementary right. school, because of space problems throughout town. Uh, so that was uh, a unique challenge, um, meeting the needs of the students and the staff, both on different arrival times, both on different departure times, and trying to blend um, and make a team uh, working with that, those particular groups of people. That was uh, a very special school within the school. That's now. correct. Uh, what, why did we have that at that time? Basically, I believe it was due to some space uh, problems throughout town, especially in, on the west side of town and in the uh, Heard School District. Um, they were running out of space in those buildings. Atwell School was the only building where they had some available space due to a committee um, on redistricting uh, that studied that particular uh, problem. I remember getting parents calls and concerns all right. summer long, so yes. that when you started in August, late August, uh, late <laughs> August I was so happy to see you. Thank you. And Thank we you. had a, a group of parents, I remember, I think we met them in the cafeteria. cafeteria. I mean, yes. that was in the cafeteria, right. and we, we, uh, there was a nice group of parents there waiting for you, and uh, uh, I, I was quite relieved that day that you were there, right. because then you could start solving some of the issues that we had that year, and, and, and rightly so. The parents had some concerns, but I have to say it really worked out very, very well. Thank you. Uh, because of you, okay. and uh, you really gave it uh, more than 100% of your time and effort. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, as I recall, you gave both schools, both the sixth grade school, the her no, and the, the three elementary, schools, actually, the third school, right. and the school within the school, uh, right. Equal energy, and I think parents felt very, I know they did, they felt very comfortable Thank you. with your leadership there. I had to keep that in mind. In other words, the Heard School, I always went to the Heard School every day and dealt with all of the issues and concerns that were there. Um, but usually, um, trying to meet the, the, the concerns back at the Atwell building, right. you know, I definitely try to save some time to go to the Heard School every day, right. and they were grateful for that. The supervision and leadership. Now, you had some special training with multiple schools before you came to Wakefield. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. In, in, in Mansfield, I was uh, an assistant principal for four elementary schools. Um, over 2,000 uh, youngsters on that particular age level in Mansfield. And there I um, basically handled a lot of the special education referrals, a lot of the supervision aspects that went with these schools. But I then, instead of having two or three schools to supervise, I had four schools under my um, responsibility um, in doing that in Mansfield. So. So it wasn't yes. a brand new concept. No, it wasn't. No, no. Some uh, administrators do apply for positions, and it's more than one school. It's such a brand new concept right. that sometimes they have difficulty with it. But you did not because of your experience. Right. We have to set priorities, and 
you know, time management is very, very important to deal with the issues at all of those And what problems. else happened at the Apple during the time you were there? Well, during, during the time I was there in 1988, a uh, decision was made to centralize grade five youngsters at the Atwell. So we have a building whereby we had some available space. We still have that elementary school within the school, and it was decided by parents. Parents were given an option to return their youngsters to the elementary schools that they came from because there would be some space available, or to keep them at the Atwell, and then we would phase out that model. And that's exactly what happened. In 88, we welcomed in um, 10 new fifth grade classes from the elementary schools in town, plus we kept uh, grades two, three, and four at the Atwell, and each year thereafter phased them out. Space was a big issue. Uh, I had to work very uh, closely with Dr. Sidella, principal of the junior high school, to share space and uh, to share staff members, and uh, we're still faced with a space crunch, even though it's all centralized five and six, but we make the best of using those both buildings. You were the perfect person to do that at that time, too, in my opinion. You, you just tackled that problem. You found the space. Uh, you used every single available space. Uh, I think you helped people adapt to the junior high classrooms, especially the parents, if you recall. Oh, yes, that I know. summer before the, the fifth graders came on board. Right. The even staff. You had to train the staff. Train the staff. A lot of the staff had been in, in their neighborhood schools for maybe over 20 years. and right. Had to make an adjustment, you know, when coming down to the Atwell. But they were given the option. In other words, they could volunteer if they might be interested. And then a lot of time was spent meeting with them and acclimating them to the building. Parents also had, had a real concern because their youngsters would be leaving a neighborhood school concept and coming on to a centralized building. So I recall um, having teas with them in the spring of 1988 and bringing them down to the Atwell complex and meeting with them by the geographic area of town that they were from and actually answering their questions, sharing schedule with them, bringing them around, and trying to alleviate their concerns about their incoming fifth graders coming to Atwell. And since then? And since then, the process is still going on. We're about to enter the seventh year uh, of uh, centralized grade five, and uh, the teachers at the Atwell, as well as Mr. Generazzo, the uh, principal at the Atwell, are going out into the elementary schools and meeting with the fourth grade teachers right. and the students. And then next week, or this week, this current week, they're coming up, the fourth grade students are coming up by district uh, on a bus trip up to the Atwell building every morning this week starting tomorrow. So right. we try to bring that transition process, make it very meaningful for them. And then we conclude. Well, you've had visitors, haven't you, from across the state? See the school? Yes, we have. And, um, very similar to my going out and visiting different schools in the state and doing some research on centralized grade five, um, we have people that may be interested in such a model. I recall some people from Melrose and some people from Leadership Academy that I've been involved in inquiring about at the Acton school system, looking at the model and seeing how the model works. No, I know, because so. I, I receive calls in my office right, and I refer to refer them down, right. Now, moving into the, uh, with D Dr. Chester Lee's retirement, uh, you, you moved into the acting deputy superintendent of schools position. So we're talking about transitions here. Now, what, what differences did you see bet between the two roles, one being principal, although I know you're assisting at the Atwell School even today, and then being deputy superintendent of schools? Basically, I see it as more global in, in responsibilities, moving from one building and, and over uh, 60 staff members and over 500 youngsters to 12 buildings and 300 to 400 staff members and more global problems, global issues uh, in dealing with it on, on that particular realm rather than just building, uh, building level, um, system-wide responsibilities that went along with the position. So mm -hmm. I transitioned into that in the fall yes. with uh, Dr. Lee. Yes. And you spent some time with Dr. Lee right. in transition. Right. Very good time together to do that. That's and, correct. Uh, can you tell us about your grant responsibilities? Yes. Basically, um, I oversee and monitor uh, the uh, grants that have been applied for in the system in many, many different areas. Um, I work with the town hall in coordinating uh, these uh, grant payments uh, and seeing that all of the paperwork and all of the coordination between the state, the school system, and, and our town hall uh, is maintained in a very smooth manner. And uh, also working with the people that are responsible or have obtained the grants um, and keeping abreast of what's going on in the state. Uh, they have a new process coming up now beginning with uh, next school year 
in a more of a unified grants approach, and I did attend a, uh, an extensive meeting the other day on that. So. Um, I have to tell you, you're doing an excellent job, and I'm not saying that because you're my guest on the show, but because I get the first uh, letter from the state regarding any problems with grants, mm -hmm. uh, and in terms of the mechanics of our writing in a timely fashion, and then the, the quarterly processing of the grant money to the town, right. and you certainly have done an excellent job in that. Thank you. I'd like to thank you for that. That's thank you. Great. Plus the fact that. you've uncovered some money that's available to us that we didn't realize recently, and Correct. I mentioned that to the school committee the other night right. that you've been you've done a great job, right. thank and you. that's going to help us uh, with our finances greatly this right. year. So I appreciate that thank very you. much. Thank you. So now we we'll go to the new transition, transition number three. All right which will be transition into the superintendency, because I'll be leaving, as you know, at the end of this week. Right. And then you will be the acting superintendent for the entire system, and you'll be working uh, with Mr. Barker and with the other principals uh, until uh, Mr. Terrence Holmes starts as superintendent of schools. Now, how are you feeling about that, and what, what kinds of transition uh, uh, procedures will you be implementing? Well, at the current time, uh, Mr. Terrence Holmes, our incoming superintendent, does come down at least one or two days a week and works, uh, works along with myself and with yourself, Dr. Mayo, when you're transitioning out of the system um, to work on budgetary issues and personnel issues for next year. And also, we're involved in um, the, select, the search process for a new high school principal. And that's ongoing at the present time, um, working along with Mr. Holmes in that process. Um, with uh, a search committee going to be appointed uh, this week, and also um, the formation of the committee, and also some public forums whereby people will be able to give their input with regard to the needs of the high school. So there are many, many issues with closing this current school year, and also starting up the next school year that we're working on simultaneously. Once again, trying to ensure that we have a smooth, smooth transition, a smooth closing, and a smooth opening working along with you and, and Mr. Holmes. And that's really my, my, one of my final comments, is that uh, uh, I was hoping from the start, and this is a, almost a year ago mm -hmm. uh, when, when the transition started, uh, I was hoping that the transition would be effective and would be smooth, and we wouldn't be losing, missing any beats. Right. We would still be providing and thinking about improving the system as it stands, and then looking forward to the new leadership for a continuous improvement in the system. And thanks to you, that has happened. Well, thank I'd you. like to thank you for that. Thank you. And I think we're very fortunate in Wakefield to have uh, an administrator with such skill and with such energy and such knowledge as yourself working through this transition period. Thank you. And uh, I certainly give you my very best wishes uh, for our continued success. I know that uh, we'll keep in touch uh, professionally, but I certainly wish you a lot of luck Thank you. Mrs. McGrath, as you continue in Wakefield. Thank, Thank you very leadership. much. Thank you for your leadership and your guidance and, and through this whole process. Um, it, it couldn't have been possible if you weren't here, and that was one of your goals, too, in moving onward out of the system was that smooth transition, and hopefully we've tried to maintain that and accomplish yes. it. Yes, I hope so. I know it will continue. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for uh, joining me in Educational Moments. My pleasure. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you for uh, watching this program, Educational Moments. If you have any ideas for future programs, please address them to uh, Mrs. McGrath, Acting Superintendent of Schools, in care of 60 Farm Street, Wakefield, Massachusetts. Thank you.